point two. introduces the actual topic of this part of the semester. I mean, if you think of, if you think back to calculus one, we spent a lot of time on limits and then uh, it was sort of like, well, we spent all this time on limits, but that's not actually what we want to talk about. We want to talk about derivatives, sort of the same thing here to a lesser extent. What we really want to talk about in chapter 10 is series. And when you say this in English, it sounds kind of nonsensical because in English, a sequence and a series are, I mean, those words are basically synonyms. If you talk about a sequence of events or a series of events, you're talking about the same thing. In mathematics, sequences and series are very different. A sequence is a list, a series is a sum. We're going to be adding stuff up. And what makes this calculus instead of elementary school arithmetic is that the things we're adding up are going to be infinite. Has anyone here heard of Zeno or Zeno's paradoxes? So Zeno was a Greek philosopher, um, and he's best known today for, none of his writings survives, first of all. We only know Zeno from other people's writing, and the other people's writing, I mean, these philosophers were not friends of his, so we only know him through kind of unfriendly sources. But from what we do know of him, he was a Greek philosopher who tried to argue that things like motion are impossible, or that you can't start moving from one destination to another destination and reach your destination. And he made arguments like this. Suppose you're trying to start here and end there, and you're walking at a constant rate of speed. Well, before you can reach B, you're going to have to get halfway between A and B. You're going to have to reach that point. And going from A to this point is going to take some amount of time. But now you're there. You're halfway to B. So you start off again. Well, before you can reach B, you're going to have to get halfway to B. And getting halfway to B is going to take you some amount of time. Now you set off again, but before you reach B, you're going to have to get halfway there. which 
is going to take you some amount of time. And the argument then is that you can never actually reach B because to reach B, you'll always have to do something else first. You'll always have to reach the halfway point and reaching the halfway point will always require some finite amount of time. Well, from a calculus point of view, this isn't a problem. Oh, we say, okay, well, there are these infinite number of time periods, but when we put them together, we must get a finite number. So that's kind of the origin of the idea that you can take an infinite number of quantities and add them together and get a finite number back. And the and this turns out to have some very important applications. And we will talk about those. I know we spend a lot of time, a lot of this class promising there will be applications and then we never quite get to them. We really will see major applications of these infinite sums. But for today, let me get our notation and terminology down. We're going to be talking about series. And when we say the word series, you should think some. These series are infinite sums. And our notation for series is notation you've seen before. This was our summation notation. We are going to use it for these infinite sums, just like we did finite sums. So when we're talking about infinite sums, we're talking about an infinite number of terms being added together. And how would we express this using summation notation? Well, we'd write a sub n here below with a sigma. We'd have a starting value. In this case, we are starting with one. You see a sub one above the sigma. We'd have our ending value. But unlike what we were doing earlier, there is no ending value. This sum is infinite. It just keeps going. So there's our notation for a series. Um, Often we get sloppy, though. Mathematicians will pretend to be very neat and meticulous, but we don't actually like writing stuff down when we can avoid it. Often we'll sort of let our readers intuit 
for themselves, that we're starting at one and going to infinity, and we'll just use that notation with nothing above the sigma and nothing below the sigma. So this represents an infinite sum. Well, as you can perhaps imagine, I mean, in this example, this infinite sum exists. I mean, you can have these infinite time periods, but when you put them together, you can get a, you get a finite number back. You get the amount of time it takes you to go from A to B. Of course, it's very easy to create infinite sums that aren't, that don't exist, that aren't finite. I mean, if you just, if you just keep adding one to itself, you get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Nine, I mean, every time you add one, you go up a number. And if you have an infinite number of ones added together, I mean, our intuition at least should tell us that this is infinite. It doesn't exist. So we're going one last piece of terminology, we're going to keep the terminology from sequences, which is also the terminology of improper integrals. If we have an infinite sum, that is to say a series, this sum might exist or it might not. And if it exists, we say the series converges and if it does not exist, we say the series diverges. Mathematicians spent, I think, I want to say centuries, my phrenology is a bit wonky. Mathematicians spent a long time I'm working with series and using series without having any formal definition of what it means for a series to converge. And that caused all sorts of problems. Eventually, there was a consensus that, okay, we need some kind of definition for this. We can't just keep relying on our intuition because our intuition is giving us some pretty wonky results. So tomorrow we'll define what do we mean when we say that we add an infinite number of things up and get a finite number. What does it mean for a series to converge? Section 10.1, you should be able to do the assessment. Um, section 10.1 is a quiz that like you've been doing. As I, I warned you of this, but section 10.2, which I think we will also finish today, we're going to be doing pencil not. I think we will also finish this week. You will be doing pencil and paper and uploading. I mean, I guess 
you are in that fast room with me. I guess you could just hand me your assignment. Um, disclaimer, I am not the most organized person in the world. People have handed me assignments and then they've vanished from the face of the earth. It's to prevent that from happening that I am encouraging even my in-class students to upload their assignment to Canvas. And I will see you tomorrow.